Issa's here, that's why all of the stuff in the background is pink. Uh, so if you want to see the video that she did using my set, she's probably gonna do a lot more. But look at the one that's appearing in the card above or in the description button. That or in the description down below. Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? I had the distinct privilege of being able to go to Unpacked, but also get a full session with the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 and the Note 10 Plus in a pre-briefing. Now, that's a big thing for me, and obviously my channel has hit 100k subscribers, so I'm really happy with the way that the channel is going, the way that things are happening, and thank you so much for being with me on this journey. However, this video, of course, is about the Galaxy Note 10. All right, there's a lot to like about the phone, uh, as is the case with pretty much any new release from a company like Samsung. However, there are a lot of comments on my hands-on video that I feel like I want to address. So in this video, we're going to talk about the five top complaints that I've seen so far on the Galaxy Note 10 and the Note 10 Plus. Now we're talking about five different complaints, but each one kind of builds upon the previous one. We're gonna start off with something a little bit simple, something that I did actually see a lot in the comment sections. Uh, it has to do with the button placement. One of the best parts about about the Galaxy Note 10 is that they have taken away the Bixby button. There's no longer a third button. This is my S10 Plus, by the way. Uh, there's no longer a Bixby button here uh, that is dedicated to just that function. Now the power button has the Bixby functionality built in, or you can program it for some sort of other shortcut. If you have it programmed for either of those things, there's a software power button that's in the dropdown that you can use in order to turn off or restart the phone. Now, there is one thing that people notice though. In eliminating the Bixby button, what they've actually done is eliminate the original power button here on the right side. Some people are really annoyed by this. Left-handed users, I bet you guys feel pretty good about this button layout, uh, but some people just might have to get used to it. That one's a little bit of like a pet peeve that everyone has with it, but now we can get into some actual fundamental changes with the Note 10 and the Note 10 Plus, starting with that screen. It is a dynamic AMOLED screen still, which means that's going to show off colors really well. Uh, however, on the Note 10, the smaller one that I actually kind of like, it's a lower resolution screen. Now, all of you out there, let me know what you think about this and the other different complaints that I'm uh, showing in this video. Let me know how you feel about the 1080p display. There is one thing that I want to put out there though, uh, and this is not me trying to be a contrarian or anything like that. It's just, to me, it's a fact that a lot of people have been using Samsung devices over the last few years, not realizing that their displays, even though they are capable of Quad HD resolution, they are currently defaulted at FHD+. You know what, do that yourself. Head into the display settings of your Samsung device right now. See if you are actually at Quad HD resolution. If you are, great, but if not, and you didn't realize that, well, that's one of my points. Uh, 1080p is still a standard resolution for a lot of people. Granted, Quad HD would have been great, uh, and even though I might not really care a whole lot, I know a lot of you do. What I do kind of care about is the smaller battery. Even though the Galaxy Note 10 has roughly the same footprint as the S10 Plus, it has a smaller battery overall at 3,500 milliamp hours. This I might care about a little bit because uh, personally, I do want to have my phone hit that full day mark without any problems. I don't want to feel antsy about actually plugging in my phone, though I will say, uh, again, devil's advocate, the battery is really easy to top up. While the Galaxy Note 10 Plus is the one that can do 45 watt charging, at least the Note 10 has 25 watts and that's still a high number compared to 18 watts which is generally uh, the case for most smartphones. So because of the smaller size of the smaller Note 10, uh, you are losing a couple of features. And that is something that we'll talk about more in the final complaint that I'm showing in this video. But as we get to the fourth complaint, I think that this is the one that everyone will really be having some sort of polarized opinion on because granted, the headphone jack is one of those features that Samsung has had for many years and now they're finally doing away with it. And there might be a couple of really, let's say obvious reasons why. Number one is what Samsung told us uh, that by removing the headphone jack, they are able to make the body a little bit smaller overall while maximizing some of the features. Uh, not only do you get really high specifications on here, obviously this is an edge to edge display even though it's 6.3 inches in the Note 10 and 6.8 inches in the Note 10 Plus. I know some people are going to call BS on that because by having the headphone jack there, it also opens up that tiny little bit of space that allows for a bigger battery, maybe even some other components. Personally, I really enjoy the footprint of the smaller Note 10. Uh, it is the most accessible Note device ever, so you can have the best of both worlds. You can have a one-handed experience as much as possible with a phone that size while having the S Pen and all of its many features. But I also get that users out there wouldn't have cared if the phone was just that little fraction of an inch, even centimeters bigger, just fractions of it. That way they could get all the features that they wanted. And that includes the headphone jack. There's one more reason that we can speculate upon uh, regarding the headphone jack going away. And that's because Samsung wants you to buy into the Galaxy ecosystem. 
You know what product I'm talking about, it's the Galaxy Buds. The battery life could be better, at least in my estimation, uh, but the Galaxy Buds are something I will revisit now that we know the headphone jack is no longer a thing in the Galaxy ecosystem. As I said before, each complaint kind of builds upon the last one, which is why this particular feature I'm actually really sad about because I do want that smaller Note 10 for its ergonomics. It's simply missing too many features, and that includes the micro SD card slot. Now, do I use the micro SD card slot? Not a whole lot. Uh, I generally don't run out of space on many of my different phones. Even 120 gigabytes of onboard storage is okay with me because I already have a Google Photos account where I back everything up and I delete them off the device to make sure that I have space for whatever else I want to do. But it harkens to the final and actually bonus complaint that I keep hearing from everybody and that has to do with the price. Like I said, everything built upon the last one. So the price is your bonus sixth complaint where it basically encompasses all of the complaints that I levied in this video. Take a moment to remember the Pixel 3 and the Pixel 3 XL. Now, those are also pretty high priced phones, but you get two different editions with different screen sizes. Uh, however, the core experience is about the same. You might get a smaller screen on the Pixel 3 and also less battery, but you still get the same high specifications and of course that camera. In the Galaxy Note 10 and the Note 10 Plus, you're actually losing out on some RAM, you're losing out on some storage, you don't get a micro SD card slot, and then you have the other features that I was talking about in this video, the loss of the headphone jack and a 1080p display as opposed to Quad HD. That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> and uh, quite frankly, even though I really want to use the smaller Note 10 because it kind of shifts the paradigm a little bit from the Note always being a very large phablet device to finally being something that most people can use. Yeah, you're just missing out on too much. And even though you're missing out on stuff in the regular Note 10, I would actually argue that with the Note 10 and the Note 10 Plus, you might actually be missing out on a lot of stuff that you expect from Samsung and it's just not gonna be here this year. So would I recommend both of these phones? Well, obviously I have to do my final reviews, but you can expect that these phones will have top-notch experiences, even if the specifications are not as high as they used to be. I want to hear what all of you think. Uh, with all of the differences that both of these phones now have, uh, whether it be as the latest line or as different editions of the same line, let me know what you think in the comment sections down below. Headphone jack, smaller battery, 1080p display, no micro SD card, and then of course the price. These are all shifts in the paradigm of the Note line. After all, the Note line was supposed to be for the power user, but these are different things that I think power users actually look for. So sound off in the comment sections down below. I'm actually going to do my best to respond to some of them over the next day or so, including uh, the comments from my last video. So if you haven't checked out my actual hands-on of the Note 10 and the Note 10 Plus, make sure you do so in the link appearing above or in the description down below. And with all of that, I'm gonna go ahead and call in on this one. Thank you so much for watching. Look forward to even more Note 10 and Note 10 Plus coverage here on my channel. And with all of that said, again, I'm gonna call it on this one. And until my next video, I would just remind you to enjoy your tea, everybody.